Hi, and welcome to this module on queries with QSQL. This is our 10th module in the fundamental series, so please feel free to check out the previous modules first if you haven't already. In this video, we'll be looking at querying tables using QSQL. QSQL is the inbuilt table query language in Q, and as the name suggests, it's got an SQL-like syntax. Now, there are other ways to perform operations on tables, and we did see this in our previous module, but for QBs who are familiar with SQL, you'll most likely find it easier to use this SQL-like syntax, and it's probably the most common one you'll see. So we're gonna start off looking at the select statement, also at virtual columns, and then how we can filter on specific rows and columns using select. Then we'll also look at doing some aggregations and grouping. Then we'll also look at using exec, update, and delete, which are variations of select, and we'll discuss how they differ. And then we'll finish up looking at FBY, also known as filter by, and learn how to avoid nested queries. Okay, let's get started. So as always, we'll run our initialization cell up the top, and that's gonna load in our data we're gonna require for this module. Okay, so there are four fundamental actions in QSQL. So there's the select, exec, update, and delete. And select will let us choose data from a table. So we're just returning the data we want from the table as a table. So let's start off with select. So before we start, we can first figure out what tables we have within our session or our queue instance by running the tables command with an open and close bracket. And there's a square bracket here. And you'll see I've got seven tables existing in here. And now they've come as before from this load at the beginning. So if I run count on one of these, you'll see I get 330. Um, I can also run um, value on the name of that table, but I need to pass it as a back tick. And that would just return the actual table itself. And say, if I return count of this, you'll see I'll get 330 returned as well. Um, so we're doing this here variation in here because we want to count all the tables at once and map them to their table names. Um, so if I run this, you'll see I get a nice dictionary I put here on the left hand side, I've got my table names. And then I've got the count of each on the right hand side. So I'm just doing count each value each tables. Um, so instead of just doing one at a time here, I'm able to do them all. And this is a really nice shortcut just to bookmark or save somewhere. And you can run anytime you get access to a new database and you want to get a quick summary of all your tables and all the row counts. Um, we also seen in the previous tables module, we have the meta command, which gives us a summary of a specific table. So if we recall, C will stand for the columns we have in our table, T for the data types, F if we have a foreign key relationship, and A stands for attributes. And you'll see I have an attribute on trade and not on daily. And on trade, it's the P attribute, which stands for parted on the sim column. So we won't worry too much about attributes yet, um, but it's just good to know we have that there. Um, and if you wanna learn more about the meta and what all of these things mean, you can head back to the tables module um, where we discuss this in more detail. Okay, so let's get going using select. So this is the form of select. So we have select, if we have a buy or not, we have it here from, and then if we have a where or not, we have it at the end. So when we use select, we must always use it with the from, and then the buy and the where are optional to us. So if we just want all records returned, nothing filtered, we can just do select from the table name. And that's the same as just calling the table name itself. So you see here, we're using our match operator. So if we just say da daily or select from daily, we get the exact same thing back. Okay, fairly straightforward. Um, so also it's worth knowing we have this virtual column I available to us. So if we ran meta on trade, we wouldn't see any column I in the table. But if I say select I from trade, I get a column return. So what's happening here? So this I column exists within all tables and it's not actually on disk, it's created at runtime. And what it returns is the index of this table. So um, all of these rows here are basically the, the index. So I could do select I against the sim, for example, and you'll see I'll get all my sims against the index here. So it's a really neat way when we want to run a quick count, um, for example, across the table, um, because we don't need to know the column name. 
I is going to be generic for all tables. So it's it's really handy um, for us to use. And it's also going to be the fastest way to count records from a table because it's not um, a column on disk. It is quicker than running count on any of our other columns. OK, so let's say we want to select only certain columns from our table. So we will put them in between the select and the from statement. That's pretty similar to regular SQL. So we separate them with a comma here. So if I only want these four dates in open and size, I can add them in there and you'll see I just get those four columns filtered. OK, cool. Um, now, if I wanted to, say, rename those columns, I could simply use my colon um, reassignment that we've seen before. So instead of calling it date, I'm going to call it DT. And then same is going to become stock and then open is going to stay the same and then size is going to become SZ. And you'll see I get the same data returned. I just have new column names here. So we can use assignment within our column selection, um, which is handy when we want to do renaming. It's also really handy when we want to do calculations. So instead of just calling back um, the high and the low column here, I'm able to add them together. And then I'm also multiplying them by 0.5, which is what we see here. So I'm creating a new column called mid um, and I'm adding on high plus low. Um, and then I'm multiplying that by 0.5 or a half. OK, um, so that's obviously really nice feature um, it will allow us to create columns on the fly. Um, but note that this mid column doesn't actually exist in the table in memory or on disk. So if we ran meta on daily again after this query, you'd see there's no sign of that mid column. OK, so if you wanted that mid column to be persisted, we would need to um, do something like this at the front. So if we did daily two like this and then we ran meta on daily two, you'd see I've now got this new column mid and I only have the columns actually that I selected here specifically. So I'm actually creating a new table here in memory. Um, so just worth noting that. And then this little QB has given us another handy tip. So we can't reference a new column that we're creating within a select statement later within the same query because that column doesn't actually exist until the final table result is returned. What that saying is if I wanted to do something like um, mid, uh, plus five and I wanted to return that that would not work for me because mid does not exist so what I'd have to do in that case is nest it so I would do select mid plus five from that so I have to run two select statements okay so I think we've got a solution of that here yeah it's showing very similar things so we're doing mid plus high here um, and if we wanted to do this again, we would just take that at the front um, and you could do select here. Um, OK, now we're also just showing here creating a column doesn't mean it permanently exists in the table, which I've seen above. So again, daily meta daily. Um, and if we want to persist the change here, we're just assigning this daily to table with that result. Okay, cool. So have a go at these two exercises next. And we'll pause here and I'll see you in the next video.